performance. Um, very odd. I have to admit, that I, I've never been an enormous lover of performance. Um, this from a review by Tom Milne in The Observer, however, which I think which kind of sums up its appeal. Uh, Tom Milne is not given to overstatement. Once in a while, a film turns up which hits the contemporary nail so squarely on the head that it really defies criticism or interpretation. Such a film is performance, an extraordinary kaleidoscope of sex, violence, and mystic yearning that finally resolves itself into a sort of heraldic shield emblazoned with the device this is now that was from 1971 when the film came out and it was really considered to be the hippest thing that anyone had ever seen yeah. mick jagger and james fox obviously the rolling stones were pretty much at the height of their power um i think the weird thing about it is mick jagger had already been seen on screen in ned kelly although ned kelly well yes now ned kelly we were was out yeah ned kelly had come out but he made it after performance Performance is accepted to be Mick Jagger's yeah. screen debut, technically. Yeah, what happened was they started filming performance in 1968. Um, they filmed for about three months. When Warner Brothers finally got hold of... Warner Brothers basically thought they were doing something in the line of Easy Rider. Yeah. You know, it was going to be sort of quite hip and quite sexy and quite straightforward. They saw an early cut, and uh, there was a very legendary quote from a Warner's executive who said, even the bathwater was dirty. And they really <laughs> just didn't know what to do with it. And uh, they were completely appalled. They couldn't understand and why, for a start, Mick Jagger wasn't right at the beginning of the film. So what Warner Brothers legendarily did with that original cut was they cut between 15 and 20 minutes out of it, and they recut it, and they stuck Mick Jagger up at the front, creating <laughs> this now legendary editing that people referred to as, oh, it's incredible the way the editing, it jumps around in this surreal fashion. Nothing surreal about it. Warner Brothers wanted to start up front right at the very, very beginning. Right. And this went on for about two years, and then it was shelved until 69, and then another company bought it out, and it finally made it out in 71, in which time Jagger had gone off and made the abomination that is Ned Kelly, which is right. really sad. Um, performance is Mick Jagger being good in much the same way as David Bowie and the man who fell to earth plays himself. Yeah. In performance, Mick Jagger plays this slightly fading rock star, you know, somebody who's incredibly enigmatic, but his moment has passed. Yeah. The story, as you, you'll know if you've been listening to the, the Brett Anderson readings, is that um, James Fox is an East End gangster who's on the run because he's he's killed somebody and he's on the run for all his mob friends. He holds up for reasons which are too complex to explain in the basement flat of Mick Jagger and two women played by Anita Pallenberg and Michelle Breton. Anita Pallenberg being very, very womanly, Michelle Breton being very, very kind of androgynous. So there's these three weirdies in the flat. East End Gangster turns up. They're obviously complete polar opposites. They have nothing in common. And yet as the film goes on, their identities become confused. The use of sex and recreational drugs blurs the identity of all the key players and they all become each other. And in the final scene, this, the character that is supposed to be Chaz, who is played all the way through the movie by James Fox, is actually played by Mick Jagger, so their identities have completely merged. What on earth it was about is anybody's guess. I still think <laughs> to this day most people who've seen it really don't understand what it was about, but the thing that kind of put it on the map was the fact that it had this incredibly hip soundtrack. You know, it wasn't just that it had Mick Jagger in it, it had, uh, you know, Randy Newman doing a Gone Dead Train, it had The Last Poets doing Wake Up Niggers, which is still incredibly controversial, Buffy San Marie, and of course now this famous, we had this kind of row about Memo from Turner. What is the story with Memo from Turner? Well, uh, Memo from Turner, Turner's the character that Jagger plays. That Jagger plays, right, yeah, so the rock star. It, it was uh, obviously, you, you say while well, they were doing it, uh, Mick Jagger was uh, doing all these scenes in which he had to uh, sleep with Anita Palmberg. Well, not sleep. Well, not <laughs> sleep. Everything yes. but sleep with Anita Palmberg. And he seemed to be quite up for it. <laughs> in, yes, in every single possible. Uh, and uh, <laughs> while he was doing this, uh, Keith Richard, who was going out with Anita Palmberg, was sitting outside in the car. Going, <laughs> and so and they were supposed to. I'm have sure this, that's what he was doing. I'm actually. sure it was. Yeah. And uh, they were supposed to have this song and uh, in in the uh, film. And Keith was like uh, miffed. Uh, understandably. Mm. So he kept them all waiting and mm. uh, sort of drug his heels. Uh, dragged his heels, not drug <laughs> his heels. It's an interesting past tense of drag. Drug <laughs> his heels. I wonder where that came from. Um, so uh, to uh, get Keith hacked off in turn, Mick uh, got uh, Jim Capaldi and Steve Winwood from Traffic In and they did a version of it. I mean, uh, you talked about the censorship. I mean, mm. how, how much of, uh, how much sort of bigger shockwaves did it? Oh, it, it was really problematic. I mean, ev everything that, you know, we set up till now was actually just Warners themselves because Warners were really scared about it. They didn't know what they had and then they, they, they thought it was very controversial. When the film finally came up before the BBFC, it was one of the most problematic films in that, in that period. Um, they had just done this thing of upping the X rating because X used to be 16 and then it went up to 18. So they right. thought they could get more stuff through because it was going to be an older audience. Um, according to, I, I tried to track this down to get kind of absolute chapter and verse on it because there's been a lot of apocryphal stories about what did or didn't happen to performance. As far as we can tell, it's this. There were 16 cuts made by the BBFC after Warners had cut between 15 and 20 minutes out of the film. The thing that they most objected to was there was a sequence in which Chaz, played by um, James Fox, is flogged 
and uh, the sequence was intercut with a sequence of Chaz making love and his girlfriend clawing his back and it was a very kind of you know deliberate the point was it showed his kind of sadomasochistic I think that's what Brett's reading tonight oh is it oh fine a bit well, later that, on yeah well I mean you know in, 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 in 1970 that was considered absolutely outrageous so uh, John Trevelyan who was the head censor at the time says in his book What the Censors Are which is a fantastic book this is what he says he says the scene brilliantly shot by Nick Roeg was worse than any that I had ever seen before we had to cut it and although the cuts were strongly resisted we insisted on them even in its modified form the scene was shocking now Tom G. Matthews who wrote the book Sense of the Recent History of the British Board of Film Classification says it was the clawing not the sight of Fox's torso being shredded by a whip that Trevelyan wanted removed mm. when Donald Campbell said the deletion of this piece of character development would render the scene gratuitously violent Trevelyan said so be it. And then Guy Phelps, who wrote the uh, history of film censorship after Trevelyan had left, said, Trevelyan said he could not countenance an explicit statement of Chaz's sadomasochism. They went through this really complex routine about uh, Trevelyan said you cannot have something that explicitly says that Chaz is sadomasochistic. And when they'd gone through the whole thing at the end, Warner said, forget it, we're going to cut the whole scene anyway. So it, a, a load of stuff got cut and a kind of collaboration between Warner's on the one hand really not wanting to confront the censors and the censors on the other hand really not wanting anything to be sort of overtly sadomasochistic. I mean, and so, the, you know, the story that came out of it is that, uh, you know, uh, obviously, Anita Pallenberg, mm. who was going out with Keith Richard, was having it off with Mick for real, and in fact, all these offcuts uh, that very quickly uh, resurfaced on the uh, European porn but, yeah, there circuit. Is this, there is this famous. I don't know whether anybody has ever sort of substantiated this. There is a rumor that you know the off, as you say, the the offcuts, the 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 missing rude. Bits having from, it offcuts. But remember, of course, Nick Roeg had a reputation for this because when um, uh, I thought it was marvelous the way I just completely ignored that joke. <laughs> <laughs> when Don't Look Now was made, remember there was the whole thing about you know Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland. Are they? Aren't they? Because actually, Nick Roeg has an incredibly That's good good film that isn't yeah it? yeah but he has a very very powerful way of filming sex scenes however i went back to the you know the bare facts craig soda's fantastic guide to this sort of thing remember this is this is the kind of uh, show where we're getting mail from this deborah o'hara somebody who entered the competition who said in saying greta skarkey she says uh, greta skarkey and tim robbins go to palm springs and have a mud bath and you can see his willy for a moment that's the kind of mail that we get so i know that people appreciate this sort of stuff. quality quality okay. everyone assumes that performance is really dirty really rude and lots of nudity in it as far as Mick Jagger's concerned, I'm sad to have to tell you that the, the real truth of it is 48 minutes in, you get a side view of buns while getting out of the bathtub, and that's it. No other Mick Jagger nudity. Buns. I mean, buns. this is the, this is American for arse cheeks, isn't arse it? cheeks, yes, yeah. but he doesn't say arse cheeks. James Fox, however, right at the very beginning, and the time code is naught, 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 so I think that's right <laughs> at the very beginning. It says very brief uh, frontal nudity and buns while making love with a woman, but you don't see his face. Then you get his buns next to his girlfriend, who buns while being roughed up by bad guys. Anita Pallenberg, side view of left breast. It's all incredibly tame when you actually see what is in the film. So one of two things are true. Either there is out there a rampagingly hot movie of off cuts that is, you know, out there being sold to millions. Or the truth of it is, people just remember it as being a lot stronger than it actually was. And I think, you know, that that lovely quote from Tom Milne. He said, "This is a, a film with this heraldic shield emblazoned with the device. This is now." I think is one of the reasons why you look at it now, and it's definitely that was then. It yeah. has not aged particularly well. I think that's true of everything, isn't it? It's like true of clothes, records, everything that was absolutely mm. of, its, of time, its time. You know, does date and. and Probably, you know, quite rightly so. Uh, just one fine, but this is the, the, I was going through for the great lines, just one, literally one line that stands what, out. What, there's a good line in performance? There is a good line in performance. It is the line, uh, heavenly, this is it. <laughs> this is Mick Jagger, this is the, uh, the, the kind of the central line of the film. He says, the only performance that makes it all the way is the one that achieves madness. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. I have no idea what that means. Me neither. But anyway, right, so we'll have, that's performance. Uh, competition time a bit later on. Yeah, and we're not going to be doing videos, we're going to be doing soundtracks. We think the best thing about the film is actually the soundtrack CD. So yeah. we have secured soundtrack CDs, which we'll be doing. Excellent. Okay, then. Right.